Hi, I'm Amanda Wagner with Young at Art, and we're here to do a uh, art project that you can do at home. Um, most of this stuff you probably have, so you're gonna be able to find the things that you need, and if not, you can improvise. Um, we're going to do a fuzzy, fizzy uh, painting. So what you'll need is your supplies. Is you'll need a piece of really, really um, hard, like cardstock or um, watercolor paper. You're gonna need some baking soda and some vinegar, um, like a tablespoon, food coloring, and some little containers. So this is what we're gonna do. With our containers, we're going to fill them up with a tablespoon of vinegar. For each cup, one tablespoon of vinegar. And then, get that. Then you can add in your food coloring to each container. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do yellow in one, just a couple few drops. I'm going to do green in the next one. And then blue. And then the next thing you do, you kind of stir those so they're well blended together. And you're gonna get your watercolor paper. And I put mine on a, a lid, a tray, so that uh, when it runs off, it's running into something that can contain it. But next, you're gonna take your baking soda. And you're going to take that and sprinkle it all over your paper. So, yeah, covering your paper. It's hard to see on mine. But it's on there. And now you can take a dropper or you can even use like a straw and plug one end and soak up some of that color. Okay, so we're dropping in our food coloring with our mixed with our vinegar and putting it on our paper. And we're seeing that, but that fizzy reaction between the vinegar, whoa, look at that, and the baking soda. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna put my yellow in too. Whoa! If you're feeling really brave, you can pour it on. Whoa, do you guys see that? Is that so cool? Yeah, me too. And then you can watch as some of the colors move together that you're creating new colors, aren't you? So that's the reaction that you get and then you let it sit and you can do more colors as you choose, but then you let it sit and dry for about 24 hours. And then this is the one I did last night. And you can see that the baking soda, everything is dry, but the baking soda is still on here. So you have to take some kind of scraper and just scrape all that baking soda off. And now you have a lovely piece of artwork. 
you can see the lines of where the baking soda was. Let's see. Right here, you see that white line? That's where the baking soda was, and it didn't allow the colors to mix. But sometimes they all got in the same river and they mixed there, but not here. So our piece is now completely dry and we scraped off the um, baking soda. And so now what can we do with it? We can get super creative still. There's still more things we can do. Um, so I started doodling in like the negative spaces in between. Um, and I used contrasting colors. Like everything in here is blue and green and some yellow. So I'm using contrasting colors, pinks, reds, purple. So that those stand out really nicely. And all that we're doing is just going in and just kind of drawing in the spaces. You can doodle in here, trace the shapes, and make little zigzags, whatever you want. This one kind of looks like a heart to me. And trace that. Whoa. And you can do this for, for lots of time. So exciting and super relaxing. You can use all those contrasting colors. It's so pretty. And then you can keep going with that. And this one's mine so far. You can keep going with that. And then what you can do is you can cut your paper. You can cut our paper right down the middle. And into fourths. And now we have two papers that can be postcards. We can flip them over on the back and write a message. I love you. Love me. That. And you can send that in the mail to someone you love and they'll be able to have this beautiful postcard you made. Oh, what a great idea. The next thing you can do is take your piece, flip it upside down, and you can trace a circle. Trace a circle and cut it out. And now what do you have? Beautiful. What can we do with that? Well, I'm gonna punch a hole in mine. I'm using a nail. Don't use a nail. Have your parents find something that works better for you. And there's a hole. And you can string some ribbon or thread through there. And then what do you have? You have an ornament. You can put that in your car, hang it from the visor. You can wait till Christmas. Put it on your tree. You can write on the back. Something to remember. Oh, that's clever. Now what else can we do? I have this one that I decided, oh, these are really great shapes that I can also cut out. So I'm cutting out some of these shapes. I'm kind of taking the big piece of paper and completely like disassembling it, aren't I? I'm just gonna cut it all up. I like these shapes that I'm seeing. I'm gonna cut out the interesting parts. And pretty soon, I have a bunch of loose bits. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look cool? Yeah. Some little circles like that. And what can we do with those? Well, we can get another piece of paper, whatever you like. And then you can start gluing these in a new picture. You can put those in any fashion you like. I really like this one. This reminds me of like some Dr. Seuss stuff. You can glue that there. 
Now you're creating your picture, but completely making it your own. Now you get to decide where pieces go and how they work together. And when you're happy with that, you can glue it down and then you have your own new piece of artwork. There's lots of things you can do with this afterwards. And these are just a few things that I thought of, but I know that you're super creative and you can come up with even more things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this project. I hope that you can do this at home and that you have a lot of fun with it. And thanks for watching.